Welcome to Demolition Wrench. More Demolition Wrench. Kind of all we've been doing lately with Earl and uh, the burnout car and the ZR1. Today I'm hoping we can do a lot of stuff and get a lot of stuff done and actually get ZR1 started up. We're going for it today, trying to get everything in place so that we can crank this bad boy up and hear this brand new LT5 roar. So first things first, we have a lot of stuff done that's been happening off camera. We got the AC all in here, all the accessories, um, alternator sitting here, power steering pump hooked up. We got the radiator and the oil cooler and the evaporator, everything up there for AC, all hooked up. We have this thing all switched over to take the new coolant now for the air conditioning system. I wanted this thing to be sort of a race car, sort of a street car, so I still was like, I'm in Texas. I want air conditioning. <laughs> Just my boy riding a little three-wheeled scooter for girls. It's cute. Yeah, that's a cooler scooter. You like that one? That's pretty neat. So interesting thing with these LT5s, the starter is actually right there down in the valley, which is super crazy. It makes sense because these heads are giant and so there's a lot of room to put things in the valley, but that's just a weird place for a starter. And you can probably see back there, there's nothing else behind the engine. So we need to put this bell housing in first and then transmission and then kind of work our way back. And then uh, the top, we got to put the plenum on here, get the throttle body hooked up air filter, all that, and then a bunch of odds and ends. Let's get going on that. So in our old style, we had the slave cylinder which would push on this, which would pull our pressure plate back. This is the new setup we're going with. So this is our new, basically a slave cylinder. It's gonna be a push type. It will push our pressure plate. It's just a different way to do it, more modern. And uh, anyway, I thought that was kind of neat looking part. So we are gonna start putting all this stuff in now we had to chop a bunch of stuff. We we're supposed to unscrew this, but it was stuck really good. So we chopped it so that that would all fit in there well. Burke's here helping. What's up, dude? Hello. You ready to rock? Let's do it. Uh, this looks super cool with those headers stick, sticking yeah. out like that. <laughs> I'm glad it's not on though. Yeah, that'd be a little hot. All right. Ah, we're going in. Hey, we need a lift. That'd be super cool, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Wish, wish we had access I to one of those. Just wish there was a lift, but it's still not hooked up. We have an electrician coming soon though. Okay, we ran into a problem last time because our bleeder, trying to bleed the clutch and everything was not working. So we were trying to bleed the clutch and get everything moving, we couldn't. So we are back and we got the clutch bled, all the brakes are bled, all the little bubbles are out of those lines. So we're good there. Now we're gonna continue putting things on under here. So we got our transmission up there, hooked to the bell housing, which actually was super hard to get it all lined up. Now it's time to start building off from this. So we gotta get a drive shaft up in there and we gotta get the big C-beam that goes around everything up in there. It was hard getting that thing out, so it's probably gonna be harder getting it back in. We'll see, and then um, we have this thing in. We need to tilt the engine a little bit so I can get the back bolts in there. We get to put them on here. Um, a couple other little things to button up, and then I we're getting close. We're getting close to being able to fire this bad boy up. Hopefully today we can do that. This is a drive shaft loop. It's to keep the drive shaft from hitting you if it breaks. Um, keep it from exploding and flying somewhere crazy. Kind of if it breaks, it just keeps it in this loop under the car, which is much safer for drag racing and racing and going fast and doing man stuff. This is the C-beam, so it goes all around the drive shaft as well, well around half the drive shaft, and it basically connects the transmission to the rear end just to stabilize everything so there's less twisting. Um, and so we're putting that drive shaft loop around this side and then the actual loop side will go around the other side so that'll keep that drive shaft all right there. But anyway, it's a really weird component. It's all aluminum, it's just one big piece of aluminum, real thick and strong and still fairly light because it's all aluminum, but 
pretty cool, interesting little thing that the C4 Corvettes have. Here's the C-beam and the drive shaft. Uh, we got them not where they're supposed to be, they're just kind of hanging right now. We're gonna jack the transmission and engine up a little bit to change the angle. And then we'll start working this thing up. Basically this C-beam, you see bolt holes, it'll bolt right up there to our rear diff. And then these bolt holes here will bolt to our transmission. So that is the plan. Okay, we just fought with this thing for a while. Didn't get anywhere. I think that um, drive shaft loop was hitting, so I think we'll put that in after we get this in. Uh, I'll be right back. I can't film and try to do it. Update. So we got the C-beam in. Sorry for the terrible angles here. Uh, but now we don't have room to get that loop on there. So I think it will fit with the loop just without the bolts in there. So we're going to try to get the loop. We're going to have to take the C-beam down, get the drive shaft looped on, no bolts, put the C-beam back up here, put the bolts on. I'll be back. But we had to take all this down that we just got in. Hey, Lincoln, I have a question for you. What is this? An oil filter. What do you think an oil filter does? I don't know. What would you guess it does? Keeps oil in it? Yeah, keeps oil. What does it do to the oil? Burns it. Burns it. Filters it. Do you know what filter means? Yeah, me neither. Okay, so we had a little, we had a leak there with the gear oil and a leak here with the uh, radiator fill up that we did. Um, I was filling all this up and it was leaking out of a little hose. It was way down there. Got it tightened off. Now we got it filling, or it's fill full, and we're kind of burping it and we're not leaking anymore, which is good. So we, this is the first time that we will be turning this motor over, so we're just going to have it turning over for a while to get it all lubed up. And so we're not gonna actually be running it right now, we're just gonna spin it. So we're opening this up so it can breathe as we spin it. This is the magic of the LT5. It has four valves per cylinder, so 32 total valves. So two intake valves, and you can see there's two intake runners for each side. Ooh, we got power, we got power, we're doing it. So this pretty crazy, crazy engine has been really fun to kind of learn all about it. And just all the weird stuff, like how they have all these little pipes and tubes running everywhere for vacuum and water and oil and fuel and it's pretty interesting to see how they did it in the old LT5. Because this engine was not built by Chevrolet, it was built by another company and Chevrolet put it in their ZR1 Corvette. So it's a very, a very crazy all aluminum naturally aspirated V8. We're cranking it. Oh, our battery's dead. <laughs> womp womp. Okay, round two. Oh, getting there, getting there. Round three is gonna be better. Listen to that compression though. <laughs> that sounds good. We are just turning it over to try to get oil pressure to try to lubricate everything before you like you start it up and it really goes. Um, but we're giving the starter a little chance to cool down because we weren't seeing oil pressure on the gauge yet. Um, speaking of new gauge, we, ah, we had to get those. They were all fried. All the electronics in this car were pretty much fried from the flood. Um, so we are letting it cool a little bit. We'll run it again, see if we get some oil pressure. We're still trying to burp coolant because apparently these LT5s are notorious for having a lot of air and taking forever to burp all the air out and fill up with water. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, everything's coming together pretty well. Once we get oil pressure going, we'll put all the top on. We have all of our injectors disconnected right here so that it's not actually dumping any fuel into the cylinders. And so once we get oil pressure, connect all the injectors, 
put our plenum on here, plug everything in, and it's start time. Problem is, it's the end of the day right now. So you guys get to see the car start in this episode. I don't get to see it start today, so. <laughs> We're gonna work on a little more, and then I'll see you back soon. <laughs> We saved you um, the trouble of putting this thing on. We did it ourselves. So Burke and I got this thing all bolted down. There also are five plugs on the underside of this plenum. Um, one of them even has to screw in. So we got those all hooked in. Um, there's another plug here. And then there's just a bunch of vacuum lines everywhere. We got the throttle and cruise control lines hooked up. Everything is hooked up, I think. We weren't getting a reading on our throttle position sensor, so it may not really idle very well or run very well. We're just gonna go ahead and try to start it and see if we can get it running. Um, not sure if we're gonna have to get a new throttle position sensor or not, but we think everything is buttoned up. There is oil in it, there is water in it. Let's try it. <laughs> a little bit nervous right now. Uh, find a fire extinguisher. And before I start, check out that new shift knob that's totally not in focus. Look at that. For one, it's a short throw shifter. We got a new short throw shifter on there, but then someone made us a custom eight ball shift knob. It is from Chris LSK.redux on Instagram. Thanks, Chris. He said he just makes these things as a hobby. Super neat. I appreciate it. And we needed it so we don't have to be jabbing our palms on top of that thing. And our other one was all torn up. So looks good. Uh yeah, I think we're I think we're ready. We are just running open headers too, so this is going to be quite loud. I'm ready. Let's see if we can get this thing to run. Did you put gas in it? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered we didn't put gas in it. I forgot that this car is not a Tesla, so we actually do need to put gasoline in it. We got some 93 octane going in here and we'll be right back. Okay, we have gas, but we just noticed also we're not hearing the fuel pump come on. We're just gonna try it though. The fuses are all good. Ready. I think we're not getting fuel. Burke figured out our problem. So we have taken the airbag out of this thing and apparently if there's no airbag in it, there's kind of a little safety cutoff and then that means it cuts out your fuel pumps. It took Brian a while. Wow. It's been what, an hour and a half, two hours? It took him a while to figure out that, I would have never figured it out, it would have taken me two days. He figured it out, hooked those two wires together, now our fuel pumps do turn on yep. and we should be getting gas to this thing. So we're gonna give it a go. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. We got pressure? Yep. Cool. Woo. It smells good. No cats, open headers, this thing smells great. Woo. Yeah. We got oil pressure, boys. We're doing it. We had to get this whole thing rebuilt. It was all ruined, all fried. We got a ZR1, boys. We got, well, we don't yet, but it turns on. We still need to hook up, um, you know, all the interior, put some wheels on it, and then I'm sure like a million little odds and ends. But our ZR1 cranks over and idles really well. This is so good. Just killed it because we were looking around, uh, trying to figure out where. You can probably hear like a whistling, like a wee. There's probably, we assume that's an uh, open vacuum line that we probably just forgot to plug back in. Otherwise, engine started right up very well once we finally got fuel going to it um, and idled really well. We're gonna adjust the idle a little bit, but man, much better than I, I was worried that it was gonna be rougher than that and it was perfect. We did not have our intake and air filter on there just because we weren't driving it anywhere, but this is it, and you can get a little bit of extra horsepower out of these if you just get some of this metal out of the way. So I'm gonna actually cut this to make it more open. Um, it doesn't do a ton, but it'll help. And then I'll put this thing back on there. 
I also, this thing, if you have a lot of suction, can suck in and constrict. So I'm gonna put something in there to keep that wide open. So I'm gonna work on that real quick. Hot! Okay, so imagine this, but gone. Oh wait, you don't have to, because I did it! Look, okay, no more restriction. There, so now this is wide open, straight in the filter, and there's a bunch of stuff here in the engine base that's not like a bird can fly in there or anything. But that is there. That is better flowing. Um, we were going to do this as well. We were gonna put some little sheet metal things in there. Then I realized we have some cracks right there and right there. This is 30 year old plastic and that is after the filter. So it is definitely sucking air through both sides there. Uh, we could get some JB Weld and try to fix it. I'm not really sure what we're gonna do though. I think I may look and see if we just should get a cold air intake for this thing. The engine is totally built has a lot more power, sucks a lot more air, and if there's a nice cold air, we may just buy that. So, I think we're just gonna hold on this. We got this done. We'll go ahead and put this thing on there for now, because most of the air will go through this way, but some still will try to sneak in through the sides here. You guys wanna hear some revs? We got it warmed up to operating temperature now. <laughs> like it was smoking a little bit it wasn't we uh we had some oil spills they weren't actually oil we spilled a bunch of coolant um and actually it was a little gear oil out of the transmission a while back and so we have all this like powdery stuff on the ground to absorb it um and so the open headers are blowing that stuff all back this way so it was not smoking which is great um it is also not leaking anywhere uh after our first coolant link up there before we even got it started. I was a little worried that once we started, we'd find all kinds of stuff. No drops of anything under the engine, which is so good. And it runs good, it revs good, it idles good. This thing's so good. It's all tuned, we got a computer that's all tuned for this rebuilt engine. For those who don't know, this is an LT5 and it's way different than a stock LT5. It's been upgraded to about 600 horsepower. Now you can see there's still a lot to be done up here in the interior. Uh, it's still totally stripped in here, no seats, wiring is all a mess, no dash, no door panels. So a bunch left to do on the interior and then we're pretty close to being done. We still need to throw the exhaust right there under the car, a couple other little things down there and then I'm sure a ton of little minute tidying up things. but. This thing is getting pretty close. We're gonna throw interior back in there. I have some brand new seats. I have a new steering wheel. Get the dash in. The dash is actually not brand new, but it's not the one that was in this car. It is a refurbed one that should work good. Everything's coming together very nicely, and I'm hoping very soon you and I will get to go on a cruise in the ZR1. The ZR1 that is 30 years old and has not driven in like 17 years. It has been sitting for a very, very long time. And we're gonna take, I guess it has been driven. I drove it when I first got it. But before that, had not been driven in a very long time. Uh, if you're interested, we have Munker Branding and Demolition Ranch and Demolition Ranch gear linked in the description below. And while supplies last, we are giving away those little, uh, they're just little like cloth masks. We, uh, we ordered a bunch, they're almost all gone. But while supplies last, we'll throw one in every order, whether you order a hat, a shirt, a sticker, we'll throw a free mask in there just to kind of help out with this. I think, Hopefully all this stuff is ending pretty quick. In my hometown, they're not requiring you to wear a mask anymore. In San Antonio, which is the big city next to me, you still have to wear a mask in all the stores. But for those people who are in places that need them, you get a free one with a shirt or a hat. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching Demolition Rich. I love you. I'll see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that number? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare. <laughs>